Hey, everybody. Let's do a little bit of news and maybe some letters to the editor. A man who stole a golf cart in the villages last year was arrested this week with another golf cart. Schuler Lane Bramlett, 23 of Oxford, was arrested Wednesday after he was reportedly in possession of a green 2015 Yamaha golf cart with a Green Bay Packers insignia. Nothing like going incognito. The steering column cover had been removed with the ignition wires exposed. According to the arrest report from the Sumter County's office, the owner of the golf cart said he had left the golf cart in a parking lot. Burnett had been arrested this past December after he was confronted with video which showed him driving away in a tan Yamaha golf cart, which had been parked at the Walmart at Buffalo Ridge Plaza in the villages. Bramlett said he had been hired to steal a golf cart and he took it to a chop shop being operated on the historic side of the villages. He was placed on probation for three years and served five months in Sumter County Detention Center in that case. Another problem with the historical area over there. They have more and more problems over there, it seems like, as time goes on. Grandkids moving in Grandpa's house. Right now, there's a, um, a, a well-known a drug house there in his historical area. I know they don't like talking about it, but I'm just letting viewers know that if you want to buy a home up there in that area, they're having more and more problems because people, I don't know what their deed restrictions are in that area. You'll have to read them. But com com compared to most areas, it just seems like the it's a little off the wall in a, in a big area up there. Uh, I think that's why the developer started buying back some of their older homes when people would uh, sell them. And then he uh, tore them out, had them removed, and he started building brand new homes up there in the historical area. Uh, I think that's a good idea. But I don't know if I'd want to spend two, dollars $300,000 on a brand new home that sit right next door to a trailer. I don't want to sound like I'm being discriminatory in any way or I'm putting people down. I'm not. I'm just saying as an investment, I don't know if I'd like to do that. My opinion. More businesses in the villages asking their customers to wear a mask. That's their right. They own it. Their their property. It's their store. They have the right to have rules inside their store. Fines have started piling up at the home of a villager who has been placed in care facility. The home owned by Linda Wernicke at 1624 West Schultz Boulevard on the historic side of the villages was the subject of a public hearing last month before the Village Center Community Development District Board of Supervisors. Whew. The grass and weeds were overgrown, which prompted a complaint to community standards. The BCCDD board found Renicki in violation of deed compliance. The district hired a contractor and had the grass cut on July 16 and again on July 30. Each time the grass was cut, a $250 fine was imposed, so the tally now stands at $500. Community standards has attempted to come to a resolution with Renicki's son, Daniel who lives in Jacksonville. However, he stopped returning calls from community standards. There you go. Good example. Somebody's sick, have you taken to a healthcare facility? They don't have nothing in place. Now fines are being imposed and the son don't want nothing to do with it. A villager's daughter known for an epic battle with her father over custody of her son has been arrested on new drug charges. Susan Elizabeth Newman, 44, who continues to list her address at her father's home at 1813 West Charles Boulevard on the historic side of the village, was arrested Wednesday afternoon by Lady Lake Police on charges of possession of methamphetamine and possession of drug equipment. She is booked on $3,000 bond at the Lake County Jail. She has a long history of arrests, including this past June when she was found sleeping in a silver Toyota at the Pizza Hut restaurant in Bushnell. She is best known about the custody battle of her father. I did report on this a long time ago, I think twice actually, trying to keep up with what's going on with this nutball and her so-called boyfriend. He's, they're all drug addicts, every one of them. She has a son and he's living around this. Grandpa up there, which is 80 some years old, he ain't got time for this stuff, right? But he gets custody of the grandson because he's in harm's way, right? Somehow in this custody battle, and I don't know how this happened, him and her got into a fight. He grew grabbed her, I guess, and pushed her against the wall. Who knows what was being said? She's a drug addict, remember? She probably said anything. Made him mad. And somehow he got evicted from his own home. She took over possession of living in that home with her son. And now she's bringing in her drug addict boyfriend, 
That's also sells drugs and whatever. And then they got it straightened out in court where now he gets back in his own house. He gets custody of the grandson. She's out. As far as I know, this grandson's still living there, which, like I say, check the deed restrictions up there. I don't want to say, but I can tell you anywhere else, a full-time grandchild under the age of 19 years old cannot live in your house full-time. They can only be here 30 days out of the year, unless it's a special needs child. That's the exemption. And it may be true here too. I don't know that. But the the boyfriend stole a golf cart up there, took police on a chase in the golf cart. They caught him. He was back in jail. Um, he gets out on bond or something. And then he gets hit by a car and killed. He's gone now, out of the picture. Daughter is still on drugs, selling drugs, been caught with drug paraphernalia and everything else, and she's still causing havoc up there. And I, I gotta tell you, I don't know why they're even putting up with this girl. I, I mean, I would just have her trespassed, arrested, throw to, just, I wouldn't deal with it. I just would not deal with this kind of girl in my neighborhood. If my neighbor had a daughter coming around doing the things she's doing up there, I would be complaining so much, and I'd get my other neighbors involved with this. We'd be complaining so much, she would, she would hate to even see us. I'd get her out. Oh, good Lord. Let me see. Um, 2018, Susan Newman uh, was arrested on drug charges. I'm skipping through here. 18, when Susan Newman was still living in her father's home, from which he had been banned because of his earlier arrest, her boyfriend, Derek John Hoffman, was jailed on a felony charge of battery after she called 911 for help. In January, she sent a handwritten letter note to a judge asking for leniency. Hoffman died this past January after he was hit by a car. Uh, prior to being allowed to return to his home after his daughter vacated it in November 2018, Charles Newman was ordered to take an anger management class. Seemed like that's a big deal. Anger management classes. You know, I'm sorry. They just passed these laws, I swear to God, to give doctors and psychiatrists and all these people a job. I mean, because I don't see where that anger management class is anything. Anything. You just do what you got to do to get through the class. Then when you get out, you go back to your normal life. Susan Newman was arrested at home in Wildwood and charged with battery in 2019. And then again in 2019, police were called again to Charles Newman's home. When they arrived, they asked for his daughter to be administered a drug test because she was giving him hell. 2020, Charles Newman accidentally started a fire in his home with heating oil. He's getting ready to cook. And, you know, at his age, I mean, I'd sometimes wonder if that child's not in harm's way living there. I give grandpa credit for doing what he's trying to do, but is it the best for the child? Hmm. I'm glad I'm not uh, in control of any of that because there's no way of winning in this case, but the daughter would be gone. Residents of a sinkhole ravaged neighborhood are coping with another eyesore. I get this question once in a while and there's really no good answer to it. And so I try to just avoid the question altogether when somebody says, what's the best neighborhood to live in? It's really an unfair question. It's just totally unfair because there's just no such thing as the best neighborhood. I mean, seriously, I mean, we're a huge community here. I can't answer that question. It's, I just can't. Best, best neighborhood for what? I don't know, but I can tell you that. I can, I can put my finger on one or two neighborhoods neighborhoods I would not buy in. And let me just draw the bottom line without mentioning neighborhood names. I would not buy in a neighborhood that had has had um, one or two or three sinkholes in it. I would just avoid the whole neighborhood, the whole village. That may be unfair. I'm just telling you what I would do. The residents of McLaren Terrace in the village of Calumet Grove have known little peace since massive sinkholes opened up in February 2018, making two homes uninhabitable. Those many months of concern about the sinkholes also saw loud and noisy reconstruction of infrastructure, a protracted battle with the homeowners, and lots of red tape with code enforcement officers and building inspectors. Now a home at 17155 Southeast 79th McLaren Terrace is bringing its own drama to the neighborhood the homeowners, Ronald Moore has died and the heirs appear to live in Arizona. Another home that nobody made arrangements for. They died and it's going to hell in the handbasket. In June, a complaint was lodged with community standards about overgrown weeds, dead grass, and mold on the driveway. Remember I did a video showing you the black stuff on driveways because we're not painted or anything. 
that was one of my reasons of painting the driveway along with i personally like the look of it of a decorated driveway mold don't seem to grow on a driveway that's been treated the next door and neighbor wallace goodsell spoke out during the public hearing friday afternoon before the community development district board four of supervisors this has been going on for almost two years now since mr moore passed a lot of neighbors have been concerned they feel our neighborhood has gone through some tough times after the sinkhole he urged the supervisors to pursue the owners and hold them accountable well the owners are dead i give me i'm saying that's probably the problem they didn't have anybody to take ownership of the house i mean i'm guessing i don't know that that whole home is a disaster i wouldn't want to live next to it i said supervisor cliff weiner board chairman jim murphy also offered some sympathy it's always a difficult situation when you live alongside a property like this murphy said the board agreed to find the owner in violation of deed compliance and ordered that the property be cleaned up within three days. If not, the district will mow the lawn and impose $250 fine each time it does so. Supervisors were frustrated that they don't have the authority to do anything about the mold. They asked District Council Mark Brions, Briones to research whether CDD force powers could be broadened to include power washing. See, this is the problem here in the village. It's not just this situation. And this is why I say to you people all the time, when you look at a new house, whatever district you're looking at for a pre-owned brand new, makes no difference. First, check your deed restrictions for that area to see if you can live within those deed restrictions. If not, move on. Also, whoever you're looking at that house with, I don't care if it's an outside realtor. I don't care if it's a village's realtor. All those people can sell a, a pre-owned home. Only the village realtors can sell you a brand new home. That's the way it is. When you look at those district rules, if you got any questions about any of those rules, ask that realtor who enforces these rules and hold his feet to the fire to find out. Uh, because I can tell you of all the district rules that I've seen broken around here, it's a, it's him haul. They don't seem to have the power to do nothing. They say they do, but they don't do anything. It's just like these homes. You hear me every week talking about these homes that have been abandoned, grass. And all, it's always the same thing. We'll mow the grass. Every time we mow the grass, it's $250 fine. People stay in these homes till they die. They don't care. They ain't paying it. I mean, <laughs> what do you do? The thing that kills me, though, all these homes that nobody wants to take claim to, the son don't want them, the daughter don't want them, they don't want to mow the grass and all this and that. You know, if they've got um, rights to the home through a will or a living trust or something like they can just sell it. They don't have to deal with it. They can just sell it. You know, you hire a guy for 40, 50 bucks a month to keep the grass mowed and you call somebody to put list it, especially now, and just sell it. I, I don't, I, so I don't understand why they say, I don't want nothing to do with it. I ain't doing it. I don't get it. I took care of my dad's house. It was easy peasy. It was no big deal. You know, so just get it done. An 81-year-old villager was jailed after a brawl at a physical therapy office sent another person to the hospital. Sumter County Sheriff's deputies were called at 8.30 a.m. Friday to Cora Physical Therapy at Creekside Medical at Lake Sumter Landing after a 911 call about a physical alteration. Front desk clerk said Pavi Horjensen pushed past another client who was waiting at the door for his turn to check in. Ferguson reportedly wanted to enter the office and sit down prior to his appointment. Ferguson, who weighs 200 pounds, continued to push the other client out of the way. The altercation escalated with Ferguson and the other client pushing each other back and forth. <laughs> According to the report, Horgerson allegedly pushed the other client into a door jam, causing a cut on his right arm. He sought treatment at UF Health, the village's hospital. Horgerson, who purchased his home at 1381 Bethune Way for $580,000, said, I don't understand what the price of homes got anything to do with the altercation, but they do this all the time. In 2015, was arrested on a charge of battery. The native of Copenhagen, Denmark was released after posting $1,000 bond. Hmm. Copenhagen, Denmark. So does he live here full-time or what? I, I, hmm. That's what I'd like to know. You old duffers. Quit pushing each other around like that. What's the matter with you?
A car left behind in a driveway at the home of a dead couple has become a problem in the villages. The home at 2016 Cordero Court in the village of Santa Santo Domingo was the subject of a public hearing Friday morning before the Community Development Board 2 District of Supervisors. The home was purchased for $93,000, $95,300 in 1998 by John and Helen Fuller. Both are now deceased according to community standards. I got a picture of that. Boy, what a mess. Grass looks like a hayfield, trees growing up against the house. There is a car in the driveway, but from what I'm seeing, that looks like the least of the problems. A complaint about overgrown grass weeds and an inoperable vehicle in the driveway was received June 8th. How do you know it's inoperable? Or you know it's a car sitting in the driveway? Just saying. Utilities are past due and there does not appear to be a mortgage on the property. The couple's daughter has indicated the property is in probate. See, that living trust would have, would have went around all that. A neighbor complained that there is mold growing on the home. Her testimony was not allowed as it was not part of the original complaint that part of the public hearing. The board agreed to allow five days for the property to be brought into compliance. If it is not brought into compliance, a series of fines will be imposed. At least one supervisor expressed frustration with the process. We go through this time after time. Now, remember, he said that. He's talking about abandoned homes. He's talking about homes that don't get grass mowed, homes over weed, homes homes with mold growing over it. We go through this time after time. People think I exaggerate when I say this happens all the time. It don't happen in one neighborhood all the time, but throughout all of the villages, this report is common. It seems like there's nothing we can do, said Supervisor Jim uh, Kipalone, and that's what I'm saying, just from what I read. Apparently, the developer didn't set things up the way he, he should have set things up, or they're, they're just not willing to really enforce the rules because it doesn't go along with their theme of selling homes as Florida's friendliest hometown. Geez, here's another one. This is this is all in one day. Mold growing on a vacant home has raised concerns of officials in the villages. The home in the village of Chatham, that's up there where the sinkholes are at, kinda. At 17375 Southeast 76, Cora Peak Court was the subject of a public hearing Friday afternoon before the Community Development District Board of Supervisors. A complaint was lodged with community standards on May 23 about overgrown grass, weeds, and mold. The home is owned by John Lasanti and Elizabeth Barondio Estate. Barondio is deceased and community standards has been unable to contact Lasanti. Staffers were able to track down Barandio's son, Lonnie, who lives in West Palm Beach. He has expressed a willingness to bring the property into compliance, but has been coping with some of his own wife's health issues. There is a mortgage on the property, but it does not appear to be in foreclosure. Utilities are past due. The mold on the home was the greatest concern to CDD4 supervisors. We can't do anything about the mold, asked John, a supervisor, Don Deacon. So it's not going to be cleaned by us or anyone else. Else? These are questions he's asking his own board members. Under the current rules, the district only has the authority to cut the grass as part of the deed compliance process. I look at the pictures of the mold on the house, and if I was that neighbor, I would really be upset. This is just beyond belief said Supervisor Cliff Weiner. The board granted three days to bring the house into compliance. If the house isn't brought into compliance, a $250 fine will be imposed each time a district has to cut the grass. And that seems to be the only thing they can do. So if you cut your grass, you can let the rest of the house just go to hell. Apparently they can't do anything about that. Unless you want to change the paint color of the house, then they can do something about that. Go figure. The Villages has been unable to recover $1,750 in fines at an out-of-compliance home. Community Development District 3 supervisors on Friday agreed to waive the fines at home at 1006 Davenport Drive in the village of Summerhill. The owners of the home, Ashbert and Joyce Borden, are deceased. They bought the home in 2015 and it eventually fell into foreclosure. Neighbors had begun maintaining the property, but in 2019 were advised not to do so due to potential liability issues and because it makes the deed compliance process more difficult. Oh, to hell with them. If that's your neighbor and you like your neighbors and you're just trying to help out, if you want to mow the grass or whatever, just do it. There ain't nothing they can do about it. They wouldn't stop me. People can't tell you what to do in a free country. Why do you guys keep falling for this crap? Liability issues. What liability issues? <laughs>
There was a foreclosure sale in July, but there were no surplus funds. Left over from the sale of the pay, the fines levied by CDD3. According to the probate file, the name personal representative in the wall declined to serve, according to the community standards. A dog bite report led to the arrest of a woman at a known drug house in the villages. A Lady Lake Animal Control Officer was called shortly before 10 a.m. Thursday to investigate a report of a dog bite at a home at at 923 St. Andrews Boulevard on the historic side of the villages. A police officer responded to the call with the animal control officer. Due to the residence being a known drug house with residents who have known warrants, according to an arrest report from Lady Lake Police Department. Well, if they got known warrants, then why aren't you uh, exercising your duty and arresting them? Just a question. The officer found 58-year-old Joanne Peretta sitting in a recliner in the living room of the residence near a TV tray. Well, apparently that's how they found out. I'll take back what I said. <laughs> The office spotted a small piece of steel wool on the TV tray and noted steel wool is commonly used as a filter for illegal narcotics use. Next to the steel wool was a plastic tube with what appeared to be burnt used filters. A glass homemade smoking pipe was found in Peretta's purse. She was arrested on a charge of possession of drug paraphernalia. She was booked at the Lake County Jail on $2,000 bond. She previously had been arrested in November 2019 after heaving a two liter bottle of coca-cola at a man friend in the villages you know apparently this is this whole day here of in the villages news it's uh, all about the different homes that uh, have deed compliance complaints every one of them i'm still on the same day deed compliance fines are beginning to pile up at a home of deceased villagers the abandoned home at 611 in canto in canto street in the san antonio villas was the subject of discussion friday morning by the community development district one board of supervisors in a meeting at savannah center last month the board found that the home was in violation of deed compliance due to overgrown grass and wheat thus far $500 in fines have been imposed at the home of late Harry and Andrika Sheffer. The district maintained the property twice in July at a cost of $250 each time. Supervisor Judy uh, Bibbesheimer indicated she believed the family was ready to step in and ensure that the property is kept up to the village's standards. If so, that would relieve the district of responsibility and stop the fines. Last month, community standards indicated the utilities had been shut off at the home. It is not known if utilities have been reinstated. The couple originally purchased the villa in 1996. Last month, an official with homeowners associated voiced concerns because he believed urns containing ashes of the deceased owners were still inside the home. Somebody asked me, so how did the ashes get in there? Well, I found out it was a neighbor, a, a very good friend, neighbor. And when one passed, whoever was left, and I don't know who died first, they kept the ashes there. And then when that person passed and was cremated, the neighbor brought the ashes home and put them next to each other there because he figured the family would want them and, and be safe in that house. That's what happened. Let's do a letter to the editor. This one here looks like it would concern everybody, and it's not that long. To the editor, my August water bill says that my irrigation system for my home used 25,270 gallons of water at a cost of $104.83 for the month of July. My home is south of 466 and has a separate meter for irrigation water, but my irrigation system is turned off this time of the year because of the amount of rain we normally get. No one answers the phone at the village's utility customer service office that was sent in by John Castura, the village of Belvedere. A resident of the Lake Sumter apartment homes was arrested when she was caught back behind the wheel of a car. Andrea Denise McFadden, 44, had been driving a gray Hyundai on Wednesday night on Main Street in Wildwood when she was pulled over by the police officer. A check revealed her license was suspended. According to the arrest report from the Wildwood Police Department, it is also revealed that she had been convicted of driving while license suspended in 2001. Again, in 2008 and 2011. So this will make her fourth charge, which in my mind makes her like habitual, right? She was arrested on a felony charge of driving while license suspended due to the prior conviction. She was booked at the Sumter County Detention Center and released after posting a $2,000 bond. And then she probably drove home. Okay, I think that's about it for right now. I had to find myself going on here, so 
Hope you enjoyed the news. If I find any more, I'll recut this and I'll add some to it as time goes on, but I think I've got enough. So with that being said, see you guys on the other side.